In this video, I want us to take a look at two different ways that an infinite series can converge. So once we know that it converges, we can ask an additional question. Does this series converge absolutely or does he converge conditionally? We want to look at what both of those words mean. All right, so uh, here's the definitions. I'll, I'll go ahead and warn you, they're a little wordy. So let's read them first and then we'll explain them in, in just plain English. All right, so uh, the first one says, if your series, or I'm sorry, it says the series converges absolutely. If the series converges, obviously that's a, a basic criteria, as well as the sum of the absolute value of those terms also converges. But if the series converges and the sum of the absolute value of those terms diverges, we say that the original series converges conditionally not absolutely. So I, I totally understand that's a very wordy definition, but uh, it's actually not as, as complicated as it sounds. So for this, let, let me kind of um, uh, see if I can explain what's going on here behind the scenes. See, what, what's happening is when you take the absolute value of the terms in your series, you're taking away any possibility of having negative terms in your series. Now, one thing that we know about having terms that alternate in your series plus minus plus minus is that it helps the series converge because you have positives and negatives doing a lot of canceling each other out and uh, that in effect don't even get really added into the sum the parts that negate each other for instance if you had plus a half and then minus a half they would cancel each other and uh, and in effect zero each other out and, uh, and so if we did not have the um, plus minus plus minus, it would make it much more difficult to converge. It's a stronger type of convergence. All right, so let, let's look at some examples and, and we'll put some meat on this idea. So here are four infinite series I want us to take a look at. And uh, we're just gonna go through these one at a time very quickly. So the first one is minus one to the n over n. The second is minus one to the n over n squared, and then one over n, and then one over n squared. All right, so first of all, I'll tell you that the first guy, he converges. Now, I'm not gonna go through a lot of the details of proving this. You can use the alternating series test or uh, ratio test or whatever test you wanna use, um, but in, I'll just tell you, this guy converges. And one thing that helps this guy converge is having the plus minus plus minus, the negative terms negating a lot of the positive terms, and it really helps this guy converge. All right, the second one, this guy, he converges as well, minus one over uh, minus one to the n over n squared, and the negative one to the n assists this guy in converging as well. A lot of the negatives cancel out a lot of the positives. All right, now here's here's where it gets a little tricky though. All right, if we look at this guy. If you did not have the terms going plus, minus, plus, minus, if you just had one plus a half plus a third plus a fourth plus a fifth, always plus, always plus, always adding, always more, this guy would actually diverge if you were not allowed to subtract every other term if you were always adding. This is an easy one. This is a P-series test, uh, one over n to the first. Since P is one, then this guy diverges by the P-series test, of course. But look at the last guy, the sum of one over n squared. That's also a p-series, but he still converges. Okay, so let's, let's take a look here. Let's think about this. So for the second one, having the minus one to the n, sure, that was a bonus, but let me ask you this. Was it necessary? Did we have to have the negative one to the n? Or to say it another way, if I took the absolute value of this, right? if I took the absolute value, which in effect wouldn't, wouldn't um, affect the n squared, it would take away the negative one to the n is really what it would take away. Take away. Would that affect its convergence down here? No, this guy is still fine. He's still converging. But what if you took his absolute value of minus one to the n over n, if you took away his assistance, his alternating terms, and just made it one over n, you see he would diverge on the other hand. So here, here's coming back to the original definition. This would converge absolutely, because if you took the absolute value of the terms that you're adding up, it would still converge. So it converges absolutely, even if you didn't have the alternating terms. 
But on the other hand, this term, minus one to the n over n, converges conditionally, meaning on the condition that it has terms that alternate. The original series does converge, no doubt, but when you take away the terms that alternate, it no longer converges anymore. So hopefully that helps you understand the idea of absolute convergence and conditional convergence just a little bit better.